Welcome in, everybody. Good morning. Good evening. We've got an audience tuning in from across North America and beyond today. So welcome into another Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants broadcast with us. I know for some of our students today and for our speaker, it's your first time joining us. And so if you are new to us, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world through over 40 live, free, interactive monthly broadcasts. In 2023 alone, we're only into our second full week uh, back after the holidays. We've already been to Chile, South Africa, Antarctica, Philippines, across the U.S., and more. It's been a really exciting start to the school year, and I want to thank you all for continuing to join us as we showcase and celebrate such amazing people and places around the globe. Now, today's program I've been particularly excited about for a long time. Uh, I got the chance to interact with our speaker today over the holidays. He does such incredible work. Stanley Edinburgh is joining us today in Rwanda. He's from Nigeria. He's going to tell a little bit about his personal story today, but he is a creative entrepreneur, an innovator, a technologist, and he comes up with more great ideas every single morning than I've had in my entire life. So he's going to share a little bit about his journey, some of the cool programs he's been up to in the last few years, and I am so excited for you guys to hear from him today. Without further ado, thank you so much for joining us, Stanley, and welcome to the program. <laughs> Hi, Jesse. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Stanley. I'm super glad and super excited to be here. And um, yeah, looking forward to sharing my story and um, inspiring and impacting everyone. So, um, Jesse, do I just go on? <laughs> you, yeah, you can go, man. Just dive right in. Your presentation's up. You're all set. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, so, Hello everyone, my name is Stanley and today I'm, I'm about to share my story, but the story is not just about um, the amazing things I've done or the things that I will do. It's about where I was, where I am and where I plan to go in my life. So this is my story, my passion and my journey. My name is Stanley and I am a 23 year old um, Nigerian. I'm a creative technologist. I love storytelling and I'm passionate about using technology to solve global problems. So growing up as a young boy, I always loved, I was curious. I always wanted to find out how electronics devices work, how they function, what makes them tick. So that inspired me to always thinker. So I was a thinker. I always like broke things apart. I was horrible at fixing them back. So uh, it was fun for me. And that led to my career and where I am right now. So um, it all started in high school and when I was a kid, I was always called the weird kid. Um, some people would call me the smart kid, some people would call me the crazy kid, and some would call me the adventurous kid. But I was always that kid that was passionate about building um, robots, um, building rockets, building devices that could help save the planet. Um, I was inspired by Iron Man. I remember back in the year 2009, I was watching a movie, a sci-fi movie, and that was the, the, the year Iron Man premiered. It's a Marvel movie. And I remember seeing Iron Man, Tony Stark, in a, in a cave, building a robot from waste metal and using um, recycling materials to build a robot. And that inspired me that even though I am a kid from Africa, where we had limited resources to technological um, devices to build such advanced technology, that I could still do something with what I had around me. And apart from that, I learned that it's not always about finding a solution. It's about training orders to be part of your vision, your mission, and also share your dream with the world. So what I did was I had this passion of teaching other kids. Um, I started my first project, which is Atecops. So what we did was we found out that a lot of kids in Africa wanted to build robots. They wanted to build rockets. They wanted to build devices by themselves. They wanted to build energy-related projects. But they never had access to the materials. They never had access to the resources. They never had access to mentorship. And that always put them behind um, their peers in other countries that, as well. So the idea was, how do we train these young people to use the local materials and resources they had in their environments to build technological solutions? And that led to ATECOPS. And currently, right now, we have impacted close to 6,000 um, kids across Nigeria and Morocco included. And we are still doing more impact projects for more communities and um, 
some of our students have gone to win global science fairs, be recognized by global organizations. And that's the important. Some of our students have started projects that are really creating positive impacts in their society. But this is not my main story. My main story is about um, an 11 year old boy that spent nearly 11 years of his life using candles and crazy lamps to study at night. I grew up in a family where we used candle and crazy lamps for a period of um, 11 years while I was still alive. Um, the, the fun fact about this is that period in time in Nigeria, we didn't have access to rechargeable lanterns and the electricity, the grid, the energy grid was not stable. So we could have a whole week without access to energy. And that would mean we would stay in the dark. So the only available source of energy we had or light we had was using candles or crazy lamps. And that affected my health um, and also affected my studies because I couldn't study at night. I couldn't do my assignment at night. I couldn't even do it in the afternoon because in the afternoon you have to do your shorts when you're back from school. So that shaped me in a way that I grew up with the problem and I understood the problem. And that inspired me to start one mission. Um, that mission was to provide young people across Africa access to clean, affordable energy using electronic waste. But that idea failed many times. I tried um, building my first solution. It didn't work. Um, I built my second solution. I used orange peels to generate energy. It didn't, um, it wasn't feasible. A lot of people were telling me, your idea is so crazy. You can't do it. You should stop doing it. Focus on your education. But I didn't give up because I knew that there were a lot of kids across Africa that were still going through this problem. And I had to be part of the solution. So I never gave up. I kept going. And that gave birth to Lighted. Uh, so Lighted is a renewable energy company that I run at the moment. Um, at Lighted, we use electronic waste. So Electronic waste is known as is also known as e-waste. So it is the waste whenever you have a laptop and it stops working. It becomes waste when you dispose it and it ends up in the landfill. That laptop ends up affecting and damaging the soil, polluting the waters, and also contributing to air pollution because it releases heavy metals into the environment. So it is a problem. Electronic waste is a problem. Recycling electronic waste is also a problem. So we had to find an innovative way to find um, how to use electronic waste to create access to energy. Then we came up with Lighted. So Lighted is a renewable energy company that uses electronic waste to build um, solar-based products for people across different communities, refugees, rural communities, schools, hospitals and different communities. And we do this through recycling lithium ion batteries, DC fans, and some other electronic components that we could recycle to build our solutions. We also use 3D printing technology to build and to print some part of our technology. But um, we have done so many projects, we have tested and experimented and seen what works and what doesn't work. Um, the first design that we had was this design. Um, it's called the Outdoor Solar Charging Station. It was our very first design. It was amazing, it was innovative, but the problem we had with this is if if it starts raining, because in, in Nigeria, it rains a lot. If it starts raining, it means the kids cannot go and charge their devices or they can't go and pick up their devices that is in the storage station and in the charging station. So what we did was we found out that we have to make the charging station smaller, smarter, and indoor. So once we thought around that, we came up with the solution of using portable solar charging stations to install inside, which you can see in this picture and also in this picture. Then we designed multiple products for different families in rural and urban communities. Lighted is it's not only about the, the technology, it's not only about the, the solution, it's about the community. It's about 
how do we impact people that need impact? So we discovered that in Nigeria, there are a lot of camps. So what you call IDP camp is called internally displaced people camp. It's when you have conflict, you have um, um, environmental hazards or things that happen in the society and people are being pushed away from their homes. These people have to live in a camp and sometimes these camps do not have access to energy. So what we do with the Light for Peace project is we go to these camps and we provide them access to renewable energy lamps and we install a charging station where they can charge these lamps. And we also install solar panels that uses energy from the sun to provide them access to energy. And that's the fun part because the energy is free. Green energy is solar energy, hydro energy, um, wind energy, um, fusion reactors. There are so many um, amazing types of energies out there. But the truth is, we have to find a way to make energy available for people, accessible for people. And that's what we do at Lighted. The reason behind this is we are passionate about training young people that will become the next generation of change makers, um, climate warriors. And yeah, the honest truth is I have a lot of amazing young students that have gone through our programs. The Lighted Kids Project is one of our most fascinating projects. So what we do is we go to urban schools that their parents have the money, they don't have the problem of energy. We train them, we work with them, and the schools provide resources, and these students build energy lamps. So what we do is we go to these rural communities. These kids that we've trained in urban communities train the kids in the villages and the rural communities on renewable energy and also provide them different types of energy solutions for them to use. And that's the beauty of what we do at Lighted Kids. We have impacted... 750 kids um, across um, Nigeria. We also provide for kids in different types of schools, in different communities, and we train their teachers on how renewable energy works and how they should train and teach their kids about renewable energy. Um, the beauty of our project is we also look at impacting the community that we work in. So we have the Lighted Energy Project, we have the Lighted Recyclers. These are the people that collect the electronic waste and we buy it from them to build our system. So we are trying to maintain an economic balance and um, empowering people in these communities to have jobs, provide them access to um, resources that they need to grow as well. Um, so apart from all these projects, I remember I started as a very young kid that had dreams to change the world, to um, travel and meet a lot of people and share my ideas. Uh, I think at a point, I didn't believe it was possible, but I was lucky and I, I worked hard enough to believe that I shouldn't give up on my dreams. And not giving up on my dreams helped me go to a lot of places. I met a lot of people. I've spoken at the United Nations. I've spoken at um, the Mixed Global Forum. I've spoken at Nigerian Science Fair, Morocco Science Fair, um, Congo Science Fair, the Berlin Science Week. So um, I've spoken in a lot of countries. I've met a lot of people. I've won a lot of prizes um, for my project. I've received a lot of support. But the, the truth about this is because I didn't give up. If you have a dream, if you have something that you believe in, no matter how crazy it sounds, don't give up on it. But always remember, you need people to help you. You have to listen to people. You have to find role models. You have to look up to people that will inspire you to be better to do better and grow in your career and in your dreams as well. Um, so these are some of the ideas I am currently working with. I would share them with you. Um, we're currently designing uh, rene renewable energy lamps made out of plastic waste. Um, we are designing foldable houses made out of plastic waste, air purifiers. Um, we are redesigning our solar charging station um, building a hand crank energy device that can allow you to charge your mobile phones, which is also a really existing technology, but we are redesigning it using electronic risk. Our aim is to build technology that helps. So I will define what circular economy is. So circular economy is an economical system of a product whereby a product does not become waste. So for example, if my phone stops working, what happens is 
we take it to a recycling place and they recycle this phone to become another product or this phone will be repaired and sold off to somebody else so that's what you call circular economy where products and um, waste does not become waste it becomes the next um, material for the next product or for the renewal of that product so while green technology is simply solutions our technology or products that do not cause environmental harm so these are the type of projects i love working on because i strongly believe that if we are to change the world young people have to believe in ourselves we have to believe that we can do those crazy ideas we can come up with those crazy ideas and we can build it you're not too young you're not too fast you're not too smart you are just perfect the way you are to create the next world but at the same time remember you have to keep learning you have to be open to learn, you have to be open to share, you have to be open to work with people, and you have to be open to grow. That enables you to become the champion that you need to become. But um, apart from technology, projects, and a lot of stuff, I love doing amazing fun stuff. I love um, doing videos and making short films. So I'm also a filmmaker. Um, I love traveling. I love jet skiing. I tried that once, but I'm not doing that again. So I just loved the one time I did it. It was a scary experience. <laughs> but um, I love doing paragliding. So I jump off, literally jump off mountains and glide. Um, it takes a lot of experience and training. So please do not do that without an expert. Um, I love going to art galleries. I love taking pictures of art i love exploring because i believe for you to be a creative person you have to appreciate nature you have to appreciate art and you have to be able to create and express yourself through art so i have one question for or even three questions for everyone young people rock we are the best because we have the best energy we are the most creative people we are the most imaginative people so why not me why not you and why not us Thank you very much. My name is Stanley Anibold, and um, thank you for listening to my story. It was amazing sharing with you. Stanley, that was awesome, man. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, if you want to come out of screen share so you can see us again, have a bit of a conversation, I'll give you a minute to do that. YouTube viewers, if you guys want to share questions in the chat, please do. I know some of our teachers got snowed out today in Southern Ontario, and so they sent some questions via email, which is great. And of course, Virginia Beach, we're going to come to you guys in just a minute live. Um, Stanley, I'm still curious, for someone who's been paragliding, why why is the jet ski too much? Why is that so scary? <laughs> too fast? <laughs> no, yeah, too fast and the water. No, nah, the water, no. Nah. Okay. Well, I'm well, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny. I watched Iron Man in 2009, too, and what it inspired me to do was to talk more to people, basically. But uh, I'm glad you have the technological skill to do some really cool stuff uh, with that. Um, YouTube question to kick us off. I'm going to head to Miss Daniel's class in a second. Um, Mr. Harold's class, how do you put things together? How do you get the like skill to, you know, you're, you're given a bunch of materials, you're bringing stuff back and you're making something with it. Where did you get that talent? Is it something that anyone can pick up? Any insights? Um, so from my perspective, what I learned about my ability to use waste material and build stuff is it's from not having it at first, like not having access to the resources made me adapt to using waste a lot. So because I knew that I had no option than to use those materials. So I think it's the, the challenges I went through, the, the persistence, the consistency um, in anything you're doing. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the time. Do not give up. Like I, I'm also a big fan of don't give up. No matter how difficult it is, there is a brighter um, end at the tunnel. Even at the end of the tunnel, you get to enter another tunnel where you meet new challenges, bigger challenges. So um, it's about learning more, watch more YouTube videos that are not fiction, watch videos that really contain um, facts. And um, yeah, you can grow by learning, reading books, Applying what you learn in your physics class, in your chemistry and biology class, that helps a lot. Honestly, you need to pay attention in class if you want to be creative and technological, like creative. Like To be creative is different, but to be technologically creative, it needs a whole different level of information sourcing. So make sure every book, every website that is um, verified or that is um, has um, correct information, read, 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 learn and practice. 
put it into practice to like not just the information practice do little experiments in your kitchen do little experiments in your backyard and yeah have fun while doing that as well i uh i love you know the idea that you can never learn too much you, there's no there's no cap to learning you always grow the more you read the more you digest the more you practice and on the note of, of sort of combining disciplines the speaker just before you today we had a university of uh, a toronto-based solar energy researcher who does biomimicry so he takes inspiration from plants and photosynthesis and uses chemistry to make amazing solar technology that you can just like paste to the side of a building and then extract things from it i mean that's a something that no one would have ever thought of if you don't have that cross-disciplinary approach. So I'm really glad we have continued that theme throughout our day. Um, I'm going to head to Virginia Beach, Miss Daniels' class. If you guys want to come on up and ask a question, you are in the broadcast. Hey, guys. Hey. I know. You're on YouTube. It's like half the fun. Does anyone have any question for Stanley? And I know high schoolers should be shy, so don't be shy. If you have any queries, come on up, and we'll come back to you guys a few times over the course of the broadcast. But go for it. All right, somebody got a question? I think there's a question. Whoa, whoa. Who's going to bite the bullet? <laughs> is there like a specific source that you get the majority of your e-waste from, or is it just like collected from an abundance of plants? Great question. Yeah. Um, so that's an amazing question, actually. So from where I grew up, um, we had a, a large amount of electronic waste because I think majority of the electronic waste from the world is brought down to Africa. So um, I think that I had that advantage. <laughs> so I used the problem to my advantage. Um, so we had this electronic waste market. Then you have junkyards. Like I was a junkyard junkie. So I would literally go to the junkyard. I literally go to the junkyard to find materials to I had friends in the junkyard. I would tell them, hey, if you see anything that looks like this or looks like that, get it for me. I will I'll give you this X amount of cash if I have it, or you can give it to me later on. I like it was a it was a it was a struggle. Um at a point I would literally have to go and do hard level walks, like lifting stuff in the market to make money to so it was it was about a journey of me not giving up i i had these crazy dreams and i knew i had to work really hard but um sourcing the materials was fun because you don't know what you find and i think that that was the important part i don't know what i'm going to find and that shapes my ideas so yeah that is fantastic man um my mouse has decided not to work so i am still here i just can't bring myself back into the broadcast so i'll fix that in a minute It kicked out everybody. StreamYard like failed in mid broadcast. Wow. Well, we're gonna wow. get the <laughs> that's the first time that has ever happened in thirteen hundred programs for me. Um, okay, so we're gonna keep chatting because we're still live. There's Miss Daniels class. Yeah. Hey, Miss Daniels class. Hey, Miss Daniels class. StreamYard hey. just hey, StreamYard just kicked everyone out in the world. That was that's never happened before in the history of this program. So you're this is half the fun. Something should go wrong in every video broadcast. Otherwise, do you know if you're having fun? Um, <laughs> sorry, folks. Um, so uh, a great question from YouTube actually is there a operation from maybe they're still in your life? Maybe it's a figure in, in fiction. Who inspires you? Um. Yeah. Awesome. So. For my journey, it's not just I think I had a lot of a lot of inspirations. I had a lot of people that I looked at their stories. And um, weirdly, the people I'm with call do not even relate to science and technology. So the fiction character is definitely Iron Man, that's Tony Stark. And then Elon Morgs is a literal representation of what Iron Man is in reality. So um his journey of building rockets and failing countless times and not giving up. That was literally very inspiring for me as a young as a young man. Um, then I think someone's work ethic that I really emulated a lot. And I always told myself, you can always do better. You can always put out the best. You have to put out the best uh, as um, Cristiano Ronaldo. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I really yeah. like um, <laughs> respect him a lot and I value his work ethic and I respect no matter how hard 
the word comes at him, he always puts out his best and yeah. proves everyone wrong. So yeah, honestly, those are my three top models I look at. You know, yeah, I, I love that you chose him because so many times we get this question from students uh, around the globe, and it, it often is people in the same field. And so again, you mentioned a couple people in the same field, but to recognize excellence and dedication and passion in other disciplines that are totally unlike your own, I think is a really important lesson for students in general, for people in general, to be able to say, hey, wow, this person really puts their all into stuff. They overcome these challenges. They do a lot of great things with that uh, effort. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, we had a question from one of our classes uh, via email. So they wanted to know what you do or if your programs have extended outside of Nigeria yet, because there's such innovative ideas. Do other countries adopt this? Have you had the chance to collaborate with people around the world with other organizations? Where is that at? Um, so for our projects, we've only done a project outside Nigeria, and that was in Morocco. So the problem with expanding is you don't know the countries and their context. But we are currently, this year is the, the year that we're trying to expand outside Nigeria. Um, to start working in countries like Bangladesh yeah. and also I'm currently in Rwanda. So why not as well? I'm also working on um, building a team around here to see what we can do around climate change and designing innovative solutions. Currently working on an educational AI system for kids in rural communities. So um, yeah, some of my projects are definitely going to expand beyond Nigeria for sure. So yeah. Fantastic. Bangladesh is a really interesting case for this because it's a place that, again, has a lot of e-waste, is a place where waste is brought from all over the world, has a lot of rural communities that could use efforts like Lighted. I'm excited to see where you go with that. That's going to be fantastic. I actually, I want to harp on the Rwanda thing a minute. We had the chance to talk about this before classes came in today, but you're currently at a university in a sort of a unique setup in Rwanda. So I'd like if you could speak to that because from you know, sure. from, from an outsider's perspective, someone like you who's done so much, accomplished so much, worked so widely, why go to a school, so to speak? And I'd love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> awesome. So currently known, I am at the African Leadership University in Rwanda. It is a university like none, like it's not like a normal university. So, for example, I started the first week of classes this week. And for our first class, we were given a tax to solve a real life scenario by finding solutions, discussing, meeting new people, networking with people, building a team in the class. And we are given a problem to solve. We had to impress the, so they divided different groups into the community. These groups are the NGOs and we had to present our different NGO ideas to convince them we have to listen to them we have to know the problem we have to identify the solutions so the school is designed to bring out problem solvers that would solve problems across africa and the globe so it is it's amazing university honestly so i'm here to learn meet new amazing people i have been meeting amazing people trust me i thought i was smart but i came to this school and i've been blown away by the minds that i meet so yeah it's an amazing university that's a great problem to have. It's really nice. I mean, we've got students in grade 11, 12 today. You guys are off to university. Some of you call it sometime soon, maybe into the workforce immediately. And no matter where you're headed, finding people that challenge you and make you think in unexpected ways is so, so important. I want to bring up uh, aluEducation.com is the African Leadership University website. It is the most slick university website I've ever seen in my life. So I encourage people to check that out uh, when you're done the program. And this is something you talked about some of your, your heroes and, and those organizations. Tesla, SpaceX, Apple. I mean, these are, or Disney, these are organizations that work by bringing people together from completely different disciplines and partnering them on creative projects together. And it's really nice to see that reflected in the educational sphere because it leads to some really, really cool stuff. Rwanda in general is a really special country doing a lot of amazing stuff right now. So yeah. I hope our, our students take the chance to check that out. Uh, Ms. Daniels class, I'm coming back to you guys live. If you have another question for us, you're good to go. Hey. All right. Let's see here. Who's up next? I'll be up. Okay. Um, out of all the projects you have worked on or like plan on working on, which one is your favorite one? Ooh. Mm. No, no pressure. <laughs> um, so so I think I would give this from two perspectives from the past and for the like the present, what I'm working right on now. So, okay, I will give it from three perspectives, the past, the present, and the future, because these are really, I have a lot of crazy ideas. So from the past was my first robot. Oof, that, that project taught me a lot of lessons. It gave me a lot of hard lessons. 
Um, I learned that if you think you got it right on paper, it's a lie. It's probably different in reality. So, um, and it taught me how to build a community around the project because I learned how to negotiate with people, get people to trust me with their money. I learned how to manage risk. I learned so many things and um, it taught me not to give up. Keep on going no matter. We built our robot the first time. The hands were supposed to be going like up and down. The hands were literally like flapping around. And, <laughs> and we had to ask for help. I always remember. I remember when to ask for help. Not giving up is great, but remember when to ask for help. The, the current one I'm working on is we're currently using plastic bottles to build renewable energy lamps. So I kind of find that interesting because it's simple. It's so simple. But the way we do it is really amazing. And it's something that we're launching soon. Um, if you can check out our website, um, we'll be launching it by February. So it should be on our website. Then the future one I'm working on. So this, this is a challenge. I literally would love, I love sharing my ideas because I believe if you share an idea with someone, someone else can take that idea and revert it. And you can see that idea and absorb it again and revert it again. That's what innovation is. So I'm working on a device that would be able to um, generate energy from steady water, like from steady water. So it's one of the crazy ideas I'm working on, super crazy. I've been designing and redesigning so many times. I'm also working on foldable houses using plastic waste. So those are the ideas I'm working around. They are super fun and super crazy and they are challenging the hell out of me but it's definitely why i am an innovator and i have to keep on going so yeah <laughs> I, I do you ever have like a boring day where you do nothing or you just can't stop yourself because it's <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, I again so yeah this is pretty mm. it's a pretty good situation to be in i'm really curious actually so uh, i get the chance in these broadcasts to work with a lot of really charismatic scientists explorers all over and one of the things that unites a lot of people is that they're really great communicators. You're a very charismatic speaker. I don't know whether this came from working with so many different people and sort of having to hustle to work and, and get things out of junkyards, being a junkyard junkie, which should have been the title of your program, by the way, next time. Um, but like, was it just self-taught and experience or have you trained to be a communicator? Because you need to convince people mm. to accept your ideas, to partner with you, to fund these things. And that requires a lot of communication. I'd love to hear what your story is um so i think i've always been a talker so i always talk a lot but i i got to a point i had to be intentional about my communication skills so yeah i think i took a lot of classes so i participated here's the beautiful thing about growing as a young person you have to participate in a lot of programs for like programs you don't get paid for or you have to put in time to learn like i said constant learning is important so when my storytelling and communication skills started growing was I participated in Google Creative Campus. Um, I think it's part of the Rare Rare Leaders. So you guys can check it out. It's a very prog a nice program. So check Rare by Google. So you just R-A-R-E, um, -E, Rare by Google. So just Google that. They have amazing programs. You can check if you're eligible to apply. Then I participated for the Roger Hochul Academy. That was an amazing program. Like I met a lot of young people that were smart, good communicators. I was I was a guy in tech. Everyone was communication, marketing, so many other things. I was literally the weird one out. But I was able to like show them, hey, I am not in this field, but I can be good at this field. Then, yeah, I watched a lot of TED Talks, a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of TED Talks. But um, yeah, I think learning more not being scared i'm a very so sometimes i switch between being an introvert and an extrovert so sometimes i'm like no i want to stay on my own i want to sleep i want to eat stay in the house play video game that's it sometimes i'm like going hiking i'm going climbing i'm just going to like going out i'm going to meet new people today so that switch is uh it's weird for me but i think for my communication skills it has always been about being intentional about it and growing and learning yeah it's always about learning yeah 
I'm glad you mentioned watching things too. This is something that we hear from a lot of our speakers, but if you are keen to do this, follow whatever the field may be in science communication, whether it's, I mean, it, it could be museum type communication. It could be something where you're creating videos. Watch people who are experts at it. Pick up some of their techniques. Don't copy them out, right? Because you have to have yeah. your style and way of approaching this. But it, it can make such a difference to watch those things and be really dedicated and, and passionate about that. By the way, if you want to do any extroverted stuff and come to Newfoundland, you can come. But we have to go jet skiing, okay? That's the deal. So we'll figure that we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, yeah. Ms. Daniels, class, I'm going to come back to you guys live, and we'll take a couple more from our online groups, and then wrap up from there. Because time flies, and you're having fun. Uh, Virginia Beach, go for it, guys. Oh, I got both. Um, Kelsey. I was wondering, how did you learn and get your education towards the things that you do with uh, Nigeria having not such a good in the area that you're in, the education system that you have? Mm. That is a very smart question, like super smart question. Um, so honestly, the truth is, I never believed in the education system in Nigeria, <laughs> and um, because honestly, I have to be honest, it's not the best. It's not even one of the best. But self learning is important, no matter in any education system you are. The best in the world. Listen, I've met a lot of people that literally studied electronics engineering at Harvard, and I could still present better ideas. I could still present way better than them. I could still pitch and win competitions ahead of them. And that was not because I came from a country with, if I gave the excuse to myself, hey, Nigeria has a horrible education system. I have not to learn again. So when I was six or six to eight, I was a weird kid. I would, I told you like in my presentation, I put it there, weird kid. I used to read encyclopedias when other kids were playing, I would just be watching the pictures. Before then, I was around 9, 10, 11. I started going to my mom's physics, physics electronics textbooks. So I, I began at a very young age seeking for knowledge. So I always wanted to learn. But at the same time, I'm super playful. I'm super jovial. That helped me learn in a fun way. So um, I don't... People would ask me, do you... People ask me, do you read books? And I'm like um not really i don't read a lot of books so how do you learn how do you learn the info like the the way you speak and everything i'm like i'm much more of a visual learner so it's also good to learn what type of learner are you some people are good with watching videos like i could watch a video and tell you every single thing that happened in that video tell the story exactly in my own way always remember find your own way of learning there are some people that are audio learners. There are some people that are audio visual and reading like different types of learners. There are some people that are just experts at learning. For me, I learned that I was a visual learner. I was an audio learner. I started reading into audio books, watching videos, YouTube, TED Talks, um, watching other people present their projects, watching other people build their projects, watching some stories. It inspired me a lot. And um, then I pushed myself a lot to to not allow where I came from define who I am. So that's it. That's a beautiful answer, Stanley. And the nice thing is, I mean, for the the, the amount of resources available to students nowadays, and it keeps growing. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just, there's no excuse to not learn if you're interested in it because the, what was that, what have I heard it said? Like in your pocket, you have a device that has more access than all the world had combined in like 1995. Like, I mean, it's just, it's astonishing what you can do if you're passionate about it. And I will give a plug too, if you're having trouble, Stanley, you talked in your presentation about finding reliable sources of information, which is really tricky. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of sure. out there. Um, my wife's a librarian. If you have a local library, public or university or school, talk to a librarian. They will help you find that great information uh, and sort of navigate through the weeds of things that might not be accurate. So I'm, I'm really glad we highlighted all that today. Um, Virginia Beach, Miss Daniels class, if you guys have more questions, I'm going to come back to you for one more. If you have more to follow up with this, you can always email me. I'll get those answers to Stanley, but come on in to wrap us up with one final question, guys. Hi, Jane. Um, is there like, when you're in the junkyards, is there a specific type of e-waste that you like avoid or can't repurpose? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah that that's that's also a nice question Oof, the, coming up with the nice questions so um <laughs> so um i think 
the amount of e-waste that I recycled grew with my experience. That's it. There, at a point, there was this type of geared motors that were used in um, winding up the glass. So the glass in your like in your door, in your car door, has this geared motor that pulls it up and pulls it down. At a point, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know I could use it because I didn't know that the batteries from the bikes could power that motor. So I was using always using the small motors from recycled DVDs and stuff. But when I started thinking like I could do this, I could use this, I could listen. Then I also paid attention to listening to the junkyard um, people themselves because they know this waste more than I do. I'm just a, a kid that is here to see what I can find. And they would advise me, hey, if you want to do something that moves like this, they were not technologists, they were not smart, they were not um, creative, but they knew their stuff. They knew what they were doing. They knew their business. So all I had to do is ask. I was like, I need something that could lift something and it just by putting a battery and they're like, okay, you could use this, you could use this. I've seen this do this before. Some other kid has come here and says that this does this. Check it out. And that helped. But there's always one material that you can recycle, but um, is the metal waste themselves, like the scraps. But I participated in this um, U.S. embassy program in Nigeria where I was the only technologist invited to work with 17 different artists. It was fun because I could see this artist use metal waste to build sculptures, to build art. And I was like, wow. My job was just to kind of integrate technology into their artwork. But I was like, it was so inspiring. I think I learned more from them than they learned from me, honestly, because it helped the way I thought about waste. So, yeah. I, on that note of sort of repurposing things for art, uh, there's a fantastic program. Sorry, I'm trying to get the name of it up on here. Uh, washed Ashore has done really beautiful stuff where they take marine plastics that have washed up on beaches and use them to create these giant artworks of like a shark or a jellyfish or a whale, sort of indicate that these are the animals that are being impacted by plastic waste. And I thought that was one of the most, like, it was just a frame shift for me. It, it changed how I perceived the problem, and it's been so impactful at zoos and aquaria around the world. So I love that blending of science, art, technology together. This is something that you really specialize in, and uh, and, and thanks for sharing all that, man. Stanley, we could talk all day. I know, I, I, and I'd like to someday. But for our class purposes, we are going to wrap up in a minute. I will note, if people want to learn more about you, you're all over the web lightedimpact.org, if people want to find you on Instagram, if they want to find you on LinkedIn, if they want to learn more about our tech hub, I did page. I can put all this to all our registered classes as well. We'll make sure you guys have all these resources. Um, but is there a final message you want to share with our students today about your work, about their own innovations going forward, anything to leave us with for the broadcast? Mm, yeah, so I always have this one quote, but I find it, um, I've used it a lot, but I always think, I could come up with something better to advise young people, but this is the best I always have. So we are all babies in this world. We are all crying out for someone to hear us, but they only pick the babies that cry out the most. So keep crying. Don't be as scared to use your voice. Don't be scared to use your talent. Don't be scared to use your skills. Listen, if you're shy, learn how to be unshy. <laughs> if you're creative, learn how to be out there showing people, hey, this is what I do. And remember, where you are today and where you'll be in the next five years with consistency and persistence is a huge improvement. Trust me. I have seen myself improve in a year and I'm like, wow, I grew this much. So Never give up. Keep pushing forward. Cry at the most. Let them hear you scream. Scream on top of your voice that they can't ignore you. You are all rare. You are all unique. But only those that show the world what they have are the ones identified as champions. So be champions. Go out there and share the world with what you have. Solve problems and have fun while doing it. 
Can't think of a better wrap-up message than that, Stanley. It's been an absolute pleasure having you for the first time. You are welcome back anytime, man. YouTube viewers across North America, across Africa today, too. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Miss Daniels' class, I'll bring you in to say a thank you and farewell. And we are done live, folks. Have a wonderful <laughs>